Hello and welcome to episode 134 of the book binge where this week we are covering finally after a couple of months almost The Shadow Rising by Robert Jordan book 4 of The Wheel of Time. I anticipate that this is going to be one of my more controversial reviews all things considered. You'll see why as we go through the video but I want to you know get it out of the way right at the start. I don't think The Shadow Rising is a bad book far from it in fact there's a lot of really good stuff. It just also has some of my least favorite stuff in the series so far to accompany that. So let's just go ahead and start off with the good of The Shadow Rising being something that I have praised quite often actually over the course of the series, my reading this series. I may not love the way the lore and world building is handled in The Shadow Rising as much as I enjoyed it in books 1 and 2, like the subtlety of those early books, but what is here is absolutely momentous and earth-shattering stuff. It really gives you a sense of the scale and the scope of the history of the world, not just the size of it, uh, which is also something that uh, was very well done by Jordan in the first couple of books, but I think was especially well done here uh, because of Rand specifically. His storyline through this book really gives you a grasp of all of that material. Additionally, the political machinations in various locations as the plot takes you through various different locations with different characters here is also fantastic. I love the dynamic between how the main characters behave versus their perceived behaviors from other parties uh, is really an interesting thing that Jordan handles here. Uh, this is most notable, again, in Rand's plotline, but I also thought uh, there was a lot of great stuff here with uh, the Tanjiko plotline, so the stuff that was happening with Lane and Nynaeve as well. Um, even Perrin's plotline in this story, you got to see a lot of this stuff because of the way that it reflects on some earlier material from the series. All of the storylines, generally speaking, have some really good stuff here, and they do build up to their own mini climaxes, which I absolutely respect. The Tanchiko plotline knows what it's moving towards, and it does exactly that through the entire story. The Two Rivers plotline comes around, and you discover there's a lot to it. And it is very enjoyable in spite of its flaws. The first point in the bad of this video is about the flaws of that primarily and the Aiel plotline as I call it has some really really cool stuff most particularly where the lore and the world building the history stuff that I mentioned earlier is about and is chasing after a similar type of thing that the Dragon Reborn did with the main characters though you know a little bit different different enough to not feel weird or uh, undeserved or inappropriate in any way it is a rather underwhelming plotline for me overall but it is doing what it's set out to achieve and I can at least respect that. Even the more tangential Tarvalon stuff in this book, that little mini plot line of sorts if you can call it that, that gets a few chapters sprinkled in, uh, it's all fantastic. In fact I think it was probably my favorite part of the book was the Tarvalon stuff in The Shadow Rising. I didn't predict the direction it would go but it is definitely hinting towards something cool to come in the series. Like I said, I only had a few chapters, but it was very good stuff. Again, I also want to reiterate, as I'm pretty sure I've said in multiple, if not all of the past few reviews, the characters are really enjoyable to follow, surprisingly so for me. Rand and Matt are a joy, just as they always are. Egwene and Moraine have a very interesting conflict going on that I found rather compelling in this book, even if it wasn't really a focus, as much of a focus that I wanted it to be. Nynaeve and Elaine and Tom are also surprisingly delightful in spite of their irritating characteristics because uh, especially those two girls have certain aspects to them that maybe aren't the most flattering, but they are enjoyable characters to follow nonetheless. I've really grown to like Nynaeve despite how much I really disliked her in the first book, but I have heard that she gets worse in the next book and is at her worst in the next book, so we'll see how The Fires of Heaven goes with that. Finally, Perrin also has some really great moments sprinkled in with the occasional nonsense. Speaking of the occasional nonsense, let's just go ahead and talk about the bad. Really almost the entirety of what I had to say about the bad. Like, if, if I were to gauge, you know, like a weighted score for how much I feel like the various points I'm going to make in this section really affected my my enjoyment of the book. This first point is like 90% of what hampered the book for me. Zareen is just awful. Her character is terrible. She has actively one great scene in this book, which to be fair, that scene is amazing, 
but she actively hinders the rest of that plot line and the book as a whole just by existing, frankly. Uh, she even hinders Perrin's greatness as well. It really is a shame because he was one of my favorite characters to follow in the first three books. He may be my favorite character even above Rand. And I'm now very worried about how his plotline is going to go moving forward because of the reputation with him and Zerun specifically. And yeah, some of the scenes in this one are absolutely terrible. Uh, by far the worst scene in the entire series is because of Zerun and actually made me so mad I nearly just stopped reading the book and thus the series. That's that's how much I found her irritating, which a lot of people laugh at me about because apparently she gets worse or more annoying or the plotline gets worse, which is, you know, whatever. It, it is what it is, but man, it was tough to get through a couple of those scenes because I was just so pissed uh, the entire time reading them. But either way, the other points that I want to make as things that I wasn't the hottest on are that I felt like the ending was very rushed and it takes a very confusing turn, uh, something that Jordan takes to a new level with this one. He's kind of been very, very want to do rushed and quick endings that leave a person being a little confused until they think about it a little bit more. You know, it, it was a little bit hard to follow with this ending specifically, and especially since, you know, it wasn't like The Dragon Reborn, where I found that climax so satisfying because everything just kind of coalesced into one final scene. Uh, this one doesn't really have that. You have various different plot lines that are going and that are separated and so have to end in their different ways. And I know that this is going to be a theme throughout most of the rest of the series is having independent climaxes that maybe don't, you know, coalesce into anything. And then certain storylines or plot lines that take multiple books when they shouldn't and thus have no real climax. So I'm, I have my expectations gauged for those books, but since this one is you know probably the most highly rated book in the series it's most frequently number one for people's favorite i was expecting a little bit more overall from this package i wasn't in love with the way the plot lines were balanced at times either this kind of just goes into what i was saying just a second ago uh, i think this book is a little bit overrated people say that it's the best plot or the best paced book in the series it's the most well plotted and i'm not entirely sure i agree i would say that the dragon reborn is the most well plotted uh i'm not sure which of these four so far is the most well paced and i definitely don't agree on this having the best pov allocation because i feel like there was a lot of pov given to like perrin and his plot line uh, and some of that stuff felt really grating and then there were some other povs that just didn't really appear and didn't have stuff happen to them that i felt like needed more like the Egwene and moraine stuff those characters basically didn't have povs beyond a certain point because it was all just rand even matt stopped having povs because it was just rand and i found that to be a little mediocre of course i don't necessarily want this book to be any longer than it is but yeah i, w I wasn't the biggest fan of some of the decisions that jordan made in this one versus the first three as for the ugly i kind of mentioned this already in the last section but i didn't find many people's standout favorite moments to be my favorites and as such the book definitely is not my favorite of the series so far ruidian was really hype uh but i didn't love it the same way as apparently everybody else did people really overrated those couple of chapters saying like this is the best moment in the entire series and i was like that's that's it that's the moment you're saying is the best moment of the entire series that's kind of strange uh the ending was hyped by a few as being one of his best endings and i did not get that vibe at all i was pretty confused and underwhelmed by it uh the book itself is made like i said to be the best of the series the best out of all 14 main novels and i it's my least favorite of the main novels so far so i literally could not disagree more on that point as of where i am in the series or the recommendation well like i said before it's kind of hard to give generic or individual recommendations for points this far into a series but it's it's hard to give a recommendation for this one as well some will say at least read through this to see where the series gets great i kind of disagree with that point it's part of what i said in my review for the dragon reborn if you want to try the series i encourage you to read through the first three books uh because you'll get different things from those three books and I think they're all great in their own ways, and they're kind of like a little mini trilogy. They're their own separate arc that kind of does what it's doing, and that's it. If you start, if you read this book, you're only getting just the very start of several plot lines to encompass probably a good chunk of the series, probably the next several of them in some 
areas probably at least through the next few books like at least through book six for most of them i would guess if not further depending so it's like it's really hard to say like yeah you should read at least through this one to see where the series gets great first of all i disagree that this is where the series gets great because i thought the series was pretty great from the beginning but yeah if you read the first three books and you're satisfied with that and you don't feel like you need to continue do not feel like you need to continue with this one. I think people pressuring you to read this one are just the people who think that this is the best of the series and that you should at least read the best of the series in their mind. And again, I disagree with that point. Of course, this might change once I'm through the next couple of books like Lord of Chaos, where apparently like the second trilogy of sorts kind of comes to a close. But as of right now, I definitely don't recommend you read The Shadow Rising if you're uncertain about the series. If you are certain about continuing the series after the dragon reborn obviously just go ahead and read it there's no reason not to but yeah uh, if you if this is where you're questioning whether you should continue or not if you're not you know super huge into the first three books i would say no that's that's where i stand as of this moment but with that being said that is my review for the shadow rising like i said probably going to be one of my more controversial reviews because of the unpopular opinions that I kind of spew throughout the entirety of this one. This video comes out in February, which is important to note because I will be starting The Fires of Heaven in March and reading that through March and April. Maybe it'll only be a couple weeks into April, whereas this book took two months. I don't want to take a to full two months on that one. We'll see what happens, but I will be starting that one here in just a couple of weeks, basically. So if you're interested in following along my journey with that, I have diary videos where i do uh reading vlogs they're basically like reading vlogs but i call them reading diaries for the first three books and this one all so far i think there's like 21 videos or something like that in that series so far so i'll be getting with those and starting in march basically with the next book so if you want to follow along with that that is an option Either way, that is the end of this video. Thank you for tuning in. Stick around for this Thursday where I'll be doing a, another bookshelf tour video, uh, a refresh compared to the one that I did last year. In fact, you'll see that if you're a regular viewer, you'll see that these shelves are a tiny bit different and I kind of have East of Eden here because this shelf is blank because I'm going to be rearranging my shelves here uh, in the next day or two in order to, you know, do that bookshelf tour. So, that's that's kind of what's going on right now. But like I said, thank you guys for watching. I'll be back on Thursday with the bookshelf tour.